Hey everyone, and welcome back to another tutorial with me, Shruti Shakar. It is blistering hot in my apartment, but I think I'm going to sit down and do this tutorial for you guys. It's going to be pretty simple and short, and I hope it helps you out. So today I'm going to talk about how to film a five sequence short film. It's really easy, and I'm going to tell you how to do it in five steps. So the first step is to brainstorm. Brainstorming is one of the most critical aspects of figuring out what kind of film you want to do, even if it's 10 sequences, one sequence, two sequences, or five. So brainstorm, make sure you do it. And how do you brainstorm? Just kind of how you would do for an essay. Sit down, maybe do bubbles. It's really not that hard. Um, let's say you want to do, uh, I don't know, a sequence at an ice cream shop. What are the things that you could film with an ice cream shop? You could film the ice cream, you could film um, um, eating the ice cream, you can film uh, the actual ice cream, putting the ice cream on the ice cream cone. Just write all your ideas down because at the end of the day, you want to try to have as many ideas as possible. The second one is to build a storyboard. Very similar to brainstorming, except not really, because what you're going to do is you're going to start planning out your five sequences. So once you've figured out the different types of shots you want to take, the different types of film, where you want to go with your story, you can start building a storyboard. Now, generally, a lot of people do pictures for storyboards, but you can also do writing. So if I were you, I would just write it, but it's whatever is your preference. Write down what each sequence is going to have. That way, when you go to film, you know exactly what you're going to film, even if there's leeway to do other random things. You don't want to go into your set and feel confused and not know where you're going with your film. So the second step, make sure you write a storyboard. The third step is to actually have a filming schedule and to actually go and film. Now it's really important to have a filming schedule because sometimes you'll have filming that will take place outside and you'll have filming that takes place inside. You don't want to film everything in one day per se because you don't know how the weather is going to be and you want your filming to be consistent as possible throughout the footage. So if I were you, I would probably film all my sequences that I'm going to do outside first or last or whatever, and then everything I'm going to do inside and try to maintain balance. So if you have three shots in one room, try to do those three shots in that one room and then go to your next scene. Try to film as many sequences or scenes um, or footage in the area that you need so that you don't have to go back to that area more than once. Um, so in that sense, having a filming schedule is very important. And then when you can go on film, you'll understand what you're going to do and when you're going to do it. The fourth step is B-roll. Okay, so B-roll is something that people always forget and they don't think about it. Um, B-roll is basically the terminology we use for extra film roll. Um, it could be anything. It could just be a shot of my eye, or it could be a shot of my hand. It could be anything. It's just extra footage, just in case that you come back to your editing board and you realize, oh, I wish I had filmed that. It's so that you have those things. And that's why it's important to have a storyboard so that, or even a brainstorming chart so that you know what you want to film and you have enough footage for it. It's also important to have B-roll because you want to have good transitional you know, sequences. Uh, sometimes people will have, uh, will be reading a book uh, and then they'll go directly behind the person to show that they're reading the book from a different point of view. However, that is considered a jump cut. You don't want to have jump cuts. You want to have a nice transition between you reading the book to maybe a close up of the book and then going to the back side. Um, so that's the fourth step. That's very important to have enough B roll so that when you come back to edit, you, you feel comfortable and you feel you have enough footage to create this five simple short story sequence. The fifth step is to sit down and edit and finalize your project. Now, I know this might be tedious and difficult. At the end of the day, editing is always tedious and difficult. But if you have your storyboard done, if you have brainstorming done, this process will not be difficult you'll know exactly where you want your footage to be. You'll know exactly where everything is. And, and, and as you're doing so, I would also recommend kind of labeling your footage. I'm guilty of not doing that often. And then I get confused and I can't find my footage. But something that you might want to do as well is once you start editing, labeling your footage when you did what and editing it so that it's easy for your whole film. So 
I hope that really helped you guys figure out how to do a five story sequence. Now, mind you, this is a process that you don't necessarily have to just do with five sequences. It could be done with 10 sequences. It could be done with 20. It doesn't really matter. At the end of the day, this is a great process to have and to always do as practice. Even when I was filming this video, I created a storyboard. I brainstormed, I made sure that I had enough footage and I tried to figure out where I wanted to edit and put everything together. So it's pretty important to have these steps so that you don't get confused, you know exactly what you wanna do. And at the, at the end of the day, you have a product that you're proud of and it's easy, it's not confusing. You don't feel um, pressured into putting something together that you don't feel that's good. So I hope it helped you out and I will talk to you guys very soon. Bye.